So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat and I'll teach you how to play Oh My Goods by Mayfair Games, a big game in a tiny little box, whereby you are trading goods and managing your resources in order to build up your engine and win the game. To set up the game, start by taking all the brown back cards with the crate on, shuffle these up and put them to the side. This is your main deck of cards. Randomly give each player one of the four char burner cards, which have the blue back, along with a worker. Then deal each player seven cards face down, which they will place, without looking at them, on their char burner. This is the equivalent of them having seven money because each good on the char burner is worth one money. They're then also dealt five cards which they can look at and this is their starting hand of cards and they should keep this secret from the other players. Then finally take the eight double-sided assistance cards and shuffle them up and change which kind of way up they are etc and then deal out into the middle of the table two times the number of players so four for a two-player game. And with the game all set up, your table will look something like this for a two-player game. The aim of that game is to get the most victory points. Wherever you see this yellow shield with a number next to it, that is victory points. The main place you'll see that is on these assistant cards, also on buildings. The other way to get victory points is at the end of the game, you can buy one victory point for five coins worth of goods. So here I'd have seven, so I could sell five for one victory point. The game will end once someone has built their eighth building. You then finish that round, and that is the game. Whoever has the most victory points wins. Each round has an active player who acts as the dealer and will be the first player. This will pass clockwise round the table at the end of each round. At the start of each round, each player can choose to discard their entire hand of cards in order to draw an equal number of cards blindly off the top of the deck. And then once that's done, your active player will deal two cards to each player, which will go into their hands. That is phase one as shown on your worker card. You then move on to phase two, the sunrise phase. In the Sunrise phase, you will reveal cards off the top of the deck until you reveal two of these sun icons. That is then your completed open market. So you can see here we have two, and the only information we're concerned about on these cards is the suns and then also the resources that are in the square. Everything else on those cards we can ignore when they're in the market. Then, with the market revealed, each player decides how they will use their worker. They can either use it this way up, where it shows two resource cards as an efficient worker, or they can do an inefficient worker, where it has one and then minus one in this question mark. What that question mark means is any one resource. So this is saying one less resource needed for doing this. So in order for this building to produce, it needs two clay and one wood. Now, we have two clay here, but we don't have the wood. So we could do an inefficient worker, and no matter what comes out in our closing market, we know we will be able to produce one good onto this building that will be worth one coin. However, we could choose to go the efficient route, even though we don't have what we need in the hope that it will come out in the closing market. Also, you can use resources from your hand, such as the wood from this player's hand, in order to fulfill the requirement for that construction. So we're still guaranteed in this case to do it, so there's no risk. However, if we do have wood come out in the closing market, we can use resources from our hand to facilitate the part on the right here. This is throwing in additional resources in order to get additional cards. So for each wood you sacrifice from your hand, you'll be able to, when you trigger this building, 
add another resource. So if a wood comes out in closing market, in this case, we'll be able to add three cards. The final part of the phase is to decide on if we're going to build a building. Now, we start off with seven money, and we think we're going to be adding three more, so we can build up to a ten. We don't want to use the wood as a building, so we then decide which building we want to use. The black buildings have special powers, for instance this one gives you a permanent one linen. And different buildings have different values for the goods and different requirements in order to be able to produce those goods. So once you have picked which building you want to try and build, and the cost of the buildings is in the top left here, then you can put it face down in front of you. Once every player has done that, you move on to the next phase. Phase 3, you reveal another line of cards until two suns are revealed. So we have one and then two. You could have a lot more than three cards. You could have as few as two cards here. The same as with the opening marking. And again, all we're worried about is suns and the resources on the cards. The final phase is phase four. Then in the final phase, starting with the active player, who is your player who's been dealing cards, each player will look to see if they've got the resources they need in order to activate their building or buildings that have workers or apprentices underneath them. So in this case, the player did get lucky and get the wood to come out. So the resources they need are all in the market, therefore they don't need to use any cards from their hand, and they get to add two cards from the top of the deck, face down onto their pile of cards here for their char burner to represent that they have two more goods, because they did the efficient worker. If it had been inefficient, they would just get one. Then they're also going to discard wood from their hand, to feed it to the char burner to get an additional card. Next, they can reveal their building and build it. So in this case, they need to give up six value of goods. So at the moment, their char burner, each good on there is worth one. If they had goods on the cattle ranch that they're just building, they'll be worth three. But the resources required for this are clay and then also linen. The cards they get rid of go onto the discard pile and you move round to the next player until all players have performed this step. Then you will clear up your market into the discard pile and the next player becomes the active player. However, let's first go back a bit because in phase four, instead of building a building, and it is instead of, you can only do one or the other and you can only ever build one building in a round, you can instead build an apprentice. Well, I say build, hire an apprentice. The cost to hire the apprentice is again in the top left, but they have building requirements. So at the moment, no one would meet the requirements for these, but I just built one red building. If I build another one, I've met the requirements in order to hire this apprentice. The apprentice will work much like your workers do. They'll only, however, give you one good on that building, and they will still require the full resources. Also, in order to move an apprentice when you're assigning your worker, you would have to pay two coins in order to do that. And so you keep playing rounds like this until the game ends. And the game will end in a round where someone builds their eighth building. You then total up points, and whoever has the most wins the game. And that is how you play Oh My Goods by Mayfair Games. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as subscribing and sharing. And as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.